19th century, so it's a pretty old, old company. Um, uh, George Rush, he was born in, in, in the US, but then he moved to, to the UK. Um, he, he was a, a really brilliant man. He created or he invented the dynamo. And um, he invented the dynamo, I think, in, he says, yeah, in 1876. And then he, he founded the company, his first company um, in, in America. And then he moved. This is a little bit of the history of Rush. We are the currently we are the, the biggest or the largest <coughs> independent manufacturers of, of uh, generators because we, we manufacture generators and no no energy. So we don't we don't manufacture the turbine, it's just a generator. We have a lot of experience on that, mainly with uh, two poles generators. Then I will explain what is a two pole and a four pole or solar poles generator. Uh, as I said, um, he moved, he moved to, to London, to the UK in 1879, and then farther north in the, in the UK, in Lovborough, where currently you have, you have our main headquarters. Um, there was some restructuration within the, the company in 1971, and they split in what, what is the electrical machines, the switch gear and transformers. And then in 2000, we have the acquisition of uh, HMA, which is a Holland or Dutch company. And they, they manufactured the four poles generators. And then in 2001, the SEM, which is in Czech Republic, that was also bought by uh, Brush. And, um, and they, they manufactured the, the biggest generator that we ever produced, which is a, it's a two pole generator for steam turbine. Um, I think it's 11, 1100 megawatt. So it's really, really big, <laughs> but, Black, sorry, yeah. <laughs> but it's not, it's not, um, like, a, how you say standard It's not, a, that was manufactured for, for a specific project. Okay. So what is a generator? Um, in electricity is a machine. Usually, I mean, we call it generator, but it's not a generator. It's a transformer because it transforms the, ener the energy provided as a spinning, the mechanical energy into electrical. And why? Because electricity is, is the best way to transmit power from one point to the other. It can be step up and down, so you can increase the voltage, reduce the voltage, distribute it in, in, a, in a grid. Um, and he said, well, it operates on the principle of electromagnetism discovered by Michael Faraday in 1831. But before going to this guy, genius, <laughs> I wanted to mention the, another in, in 1920, Christian Orsted, he noticed um, an effect that was related with the current and the magnetism. Okay, so I had, I had a video to show you, which is actually a good explanation of uh, what what the what Orsted experiment. Around the current carry conductor. So I have to get out of this presentation. <laughs> okay. See now. Orsted's experiment. You have a battery and a wire and a compass. Danish school teacher Hans Christian Orsted in the year 1820, concluded a magnetic field is created around a current carrying conductor. <coughs> Hans Oersted placed a compass needle below a wire carrying current. He observed that the needle deflected, showing that a magnetic field is created around the wire. Then. 
Hans Orsted repeated the experiment by placing the compass needle above the wire. He observed that the needle deflected in the opposite direction. This experiment indicated that the direction of the magnetic field above and below the wire is in opposite directions. Okay. He also observed that if the direction of the current in the wire is reversed, the deflection in the compass needle is also reversed. This experiment shows that the direction of the magnetic field depends upon the direction of current. Okay, so as we have our first our first conclusion of this experiment is that what what Orsted made you made a, a wire, let's say, okay, and um, if you make it flow a current through it. <clears throat> So you have a current flowing through a wire, and it will create a magnetic field. We 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 say that the magnetic field will go all around because of how he tested putting the compass in different places around the wire. He could he could see that there was like a it was around the wire. Okay, so he developed the knowledge that you have some magnetic field going around the, the wire in all the length of the wire, okay? That's how he, he, they start saying, okay, there is a combination, there is a relation between the magnetic flux, which is, is indicated by the phi, and the, and the current. And also is the higher the, the current, the higher the magnetic flux, and also if you change the, uh, the sign, it will also change the sign in which the magnetic flux um, works. Okay, so with the compass, we go in one direction or the other. So then they, they start experimenting with giving giving different shapes to the to the coil. That that's what we call it. That's one turn of a coil. Okay. So this one has to be, of course, energized. Let's say like this. You have a battery connected to here. And this is the area of, of what we call the coil, the coil. So what they seen after experimenting is like if you go, this is for one, but if you do several coils, several turns of the coil, it will be added more and more mag magnetism in, within the, the center of the, of the turn, the coil. So it was the flux was related also to the number of, of coils, of turns that we have in the coil. But, but there, was no, um, there was no relation between the flux and the current. It's like if you, if you put a magnet on a, close to a wire, that will, nothing happen. Okay? So they say, okay, it's only in one way for the moment that they, they say, okay, the current initiates a magnetic flux and we can move objects and it could also be created an electromagnet, for example, you know. Uh, maybe you have the, the, the knowledge of what an electromagnet is. You say you have, if you put a piece of, of ion inside inside this coil, the, there will be a magnetic, a magnetic flux here and here. And why is it like that? It's, the thing is that you have Let's say you make a coil like this, and you have a current through it. All the every every turn makes a flux inside the inside the the turn, and is adding one on, on one. So in, within the, the center of the coil, <coughs> you have magnetic flux in this in this center. Okay. And you can see that you have like a north and a south. And if you put more current or more turns, it will be stronger. And if you reverse the current, the, the magnet will be like the opposite direction. So with all this experiment, they start watching different things. And that was what um, <clears throat> Faraday in, in 1831, 
he discovered another effect, which is his law of induction that he says is a relation on the on the other way. That like, okay, so the current will activate the flux, but the flux was not activating any current on the wire. But if you do, if you make this, if you put a, a coil like this, and you have a magnet, and you move it, he discovered that there was some current flowing for only when it was moving. Okay, so he said, oh, <clears throat> there's something happening in here. It's like when it's moving, it's causing some current. So it's you you need it. Uh, that's why a magnet wouldn't on its own wouldn't wouldn't make any current flow. But when you move it around. Like when the wires see the, the fluctuation of the flow of the uh, electromagnetic, that'll be the magnetic field, it will start inducing voltage, you know? What he was, look, let me see. He would, what he discovered was this you have, again, a turn, let's do it flatter. You have a turn like this, let's say. And you put a magnet here, on the south, and you you move it. You move it through this, through the what we call is the area of the turn. And by doing this, he could measure a voltage here. So there was a small voltage. So that that was a principle of okay. If you have some voltage, maybe you can you can make something with that voltage, okay? And if you have several turns, every turn will add some voltage, okay? So what, what, what we, uh, he discovered that the voltage would depend on the, the flux that you have. Actually, it's not the flux only, it's the, the variation of the flux within time, and it has to you have to have it variating, and the number of turns that you have, okay? So, what we have here, well, we, we said that is a, this is part of the previous comment I made, so they discovered they could make a, a generator, because, okay, based on some mechanical movement, you're moving a piece of metal, nothing happened. But if you move a piece of magnet within within some coil, you will have some voltage. Okay, and that voltage could be used, as we said, to uh, uh, turn on the light, for example. And that would be a generator. It's a very simple thing. You put a, a magnet. You put a magnet surrounded by by Call copper wire, and then you make it spin, and you can you can use it to uh, turn on the light. As simple as that. This could be one thing. A handle on one end. Okay, you are you have a magnet here, and this is also, um, this is a coil that is in, in winning, and you can have some current measure here. Okay. Let's see. Is it clear what what the relation was? Is like okay, we have first a current causing a flux, but if the flux variates, it also causes uh, a voltage, and that that this is what they use. This one actually wasn't useful more more to do to play and say with with electromagnets and. Nowadays we use electromagnets, but in those days there was not much use of, for, of for that because they needed a lot of power to energize them. Right? An electromagnet to lift the car for some that would require a lot of current that wasn't available because whatever they had, it was only a battery. Okay, so you, you put a battery, it will uh, waste all the energy very soon. They are making shorts. <laughs> this this is a short. So for any battery that won't be useful. But once they discover this effect, they say, okay, we, we have a magnet, and the magnet is something that lasts uh, a natural magnet or artificial. 
so you, you can spin it. And one thing is, since it is um, related to the to the speed of the variation of the flux, it means that in the the faster you turn the the handle, the more mo voltage you will have. So we can say like this could be let's say the frequency the frequency of your of your spin and the flux is related to a current so we can have this this is the flux and the number of turns that you have in this one so this will be the number of turns for the for the magnet or if you have electromagnet and this is the number of turns that you have here in the in the stator, what we call because this one doesn't move, okay? So, for example, in your unit here, you have a PMG, which is a permanent magnet generator that, that is attached to the shaft, and that's basically the the, ba the the basic generator that we have. That you have a magnet spinning and surrounded by coils, and we use this. Then later in the presentation, I will show you where where you use the permanent magnet generator and what's the disadvantage that you have. Okay, because here, as we said, we have the frequency, a current that you you may control, and this will give you the voltage that you can create. So let's see. The way in which you move the shaft, or what you use to move the, the, the shaft, the magnet, it doesn't matter actually, it could be, that's what we call the prime mover. It could be a diesel, like in this case a diesel generator, diesel engine, sorry. Or like you have is a gas turbine, okay? This, all, all these machines, they make something spin, okay? You have the hydraulic for water plant. It's all the same. Uh, the same effect is to turn the shaft of the generator. It's, it's all what you need. This is a huge steam turbine. So what I what I want to show you is how different it can be in the in the physical implementation, but the principle is all the same for all the units. You have in this case several stages of steam, like high high pressure, and low pressure, or middle pressure. That's most likely for the for a nuclear power plant because of the steam that you can that you can provide, right? Also the wind the wind turbine. Though in this case, for all the units, what you actually need is to control the frequency at which you, you make it turn because it's important to keep certain voltage and also to keep a certain speed. So we have as as simple as it can be here in the just a spin, it's just, just a turn and a, and a shaft. Uh, the, the actual unit is quite complicated. This is one of our the main products that we have in DAX. It's a two-pole generator, okay, and you can see all the the different the different parts it has. You will always find a stator, okay, a rotor which is which is magnetized by the the exciter. Then I will explain what is each of these components. But um, you also this needs needs to be cooled. So you need um, you need the air flowing, a certain amount of air. The design is very important. Our our generators are really really good in the sense of um, if they are well maintained, you you will not have any problem in the bearings like uh, oil dripping. Uh, the the cooling system is really effective. Um, in in other design, other manufacturers they have a design flow that, for example cook the, the, the air inside so hot 
they cook the, the coils and, and insulation and it get damaged. Okay, so what happens? You you have one of the things that you need to take into account. For each turn, you have a voltage, okay? In each turn, you add one, one piece, one delta of voltage, and at the end, you have a higher voltage, okay? So, the higher the voltage that you have, the higher insulation you, you need to apply, uh, so the manufacturing process is different. Um, you have to have into account a lot of things that is, is make, make it impossible to say, okay, I'm going to generate in 500 kilovolts. No, that's, I don't know any unit that, <laughs> that provides such a high, high voltage. Um, the highest I, I've seen is 21 kilovolts for the uh, generator or steam turbine on a nuclear power plant. Like the output is 21 kilovolts, but usually it is 13.8 for 60 hertz and 11.5 for 50 hertz. And that, that there is a reason for that. I told you, I told you this is related, okay? The frequency and the, and the voltage that you, you provide. Our generators, most of them were, yeah, I would say, all of them actually, but uh, some of them has a, a plate for two frequencies. So it's the same power, but in one case you can make it spin at 50 hertz or 60 hertz, and it will give 11.5 or 13.8. And the and the ratio, the ratio, 13.8 and 11.5 is exactly <laughs> is exactly the same as 60 hertz and 50 hertz, okay? So it's that linearly vinculated, this is one point two. This is su such a linearity that, that you have, is the, the more frequency you put, the more, the more voltage you get. But in a, in a country, they, they say, okay, here in the US is 60 hertz, so all the units, all the units that are connected has to run at 60 hertz, otherwise uh, it, it will not work at all. Um, that's really important to keep that, that's why the, the wind generators, they are not capable of keeping the, the speed as good as, as a steam turbine or, or a gas turbine, because you sometimes you have wind and sometimes you don't, and the idea is to extract the most the most uh, power out of it, but keeping the, the frequency. I got a question on that. Yeah. You can answer some of those wind turbines, which I've, I've never really read up on those. But I'm assuming they got some kind of a CSD or concrete speed drive. Mm -hmm. no, is that true? I worked on the wind okay. farms. Uh, no, no. Uh, they actually they are DC generators. Okay. And they have a um, triac back the switches introduce DC to AC. So there's things they can spin until the plates fall off. <laughs> and the plates they move to control yeah, the speed. Pitch. But yeah. it's not for the frequency. Okay. No, it is, it's to what? To the efficiency of the, how, how they capture the wind. Right. right. And, and, or not to go to uh, an overspeed condition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because you can move the plates and yeah. you can slow them down. Yeah. But there are DC uh, generators. They're not DC generators. Well, I, I've seen one that was Inside was an AC, then it was rectified, correct, and then it was uh, inverted again. So it, it has a lot of elect uh, electronics. Electronic, yeah, and that's like, why those things that keep on blowing up, and that's why they're really not. <laughs> <laughs> and also, one thing is that um, the biggest, the biggest, the, the shaft. I mean, the heavy, the heaviest is the, the shaft. You have more inertia, okay? Sure. So the inertia. It tends to maintain the, the rotation speed, so it's, it's difficult to stop it, and that's why it's useful to have a lot of inertia in the grid. So if there is a sudden sudden load that appear, or, or you lose one generator, the rest will, because of the inertia, will keep the frequency of the system and change, more or less unchanged. There will be some bump, okay, but because of the inertia, it will keep rotating. The wind. Uh, generator, since they are disengaged, let's say mechanically, 
the, even they have they have big inertia, but it can be used because actually there's no two-way uh, interaction on the power. You have the generator on one end, and then you 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 break it with the DC with the DC bus in between, and then you you uh, add more electronic to make the sixty the, yeah sixty or fifty hertz that you need. But it's actually not that not adding inertia. It would be it would be interesting if they could take profit of that because it is a heavy heavy unit which is different difficult to change the speed once it's spinning and also when it's difficult to break. I've seen some videos of what happened when the brake fails and it's terrible. So um, one interesting thing about it is like then I will explain why. But you have this is the exciter, okay? The exciter is a is a generator just like this, but smaller. You remember I was telling you about you have two generators in, in, in inside the, the the machine. Yeah. And this one works as an amplifier, okay? And we give you some some information on on the the amount of current that you need to excite. Um, and the amount of amplification that you have, and you will see how useful it is to have that in the... In the That's making the shaft a stronger electromagnet? Sorry? It's making the shaft a stronger electromagnet? Is that what No, what this one, what it does is, um, let me see if I have, well, uh, later on in the presentation, I have a, a, a graphic, like a schematic, I will show you better. But basically what you have here is, this is the diode wheel, which is a, a rectifier. This is just a rectifier, but it's spinning, because it has to be on the shaft. This is a design for a brushless unit. It's, it's funny because we are brush, but we manufacture brushless unit. And uh, not having any brush in the in, in the shaft, that's an advantage also. So I, I will I will talk about it later on. Because one thing is the principle of what we were talking about and then how you implement it, it can be you, you have a lot of different things. Okay. So getting back to this, which is which is uh, this looks more like what we have and <coughs> in mind when we talk about a generator. So that would be, this would be the term, which is static, it doesn't move. And then we have the shaft with the magnet, okay? And when you turn it, you will make it appear here a voltage, only when you turn it, okay? So to that voltage, you can connect the load and use it. I imagine everybody has seen one of those old-fashioned bicycle light put in the come yeah. to the mm -hmm. export diagrams. Yeah, it's exactly that. You, you have a, a wheel touching your wheel, which make it turn inside has a magnet. The problem is that what happened here, you see, uh, so well, this is explanation, you have the stator is a stationary loop of wire, actually you have several loops, okay? This is thinking in, a, in a only one phase, okay? You have only one circuit of current, and you can add as many as many turns as you want, but also uh, you need to you need to know that there will be difficulties to put it in the in the shaft. I mean, to put it around the shaft. And also, it can be in the same in the same place, and this distance is really important. So then you have to, when you say okay, adding terms, you have to distribute it. It's not just like in the design. You know that it has to be several terms, but doing it is, is difficult. Are there like diminishing returns the more you add, or is it always constant? You can add more, you'll get more. Yeah, if it's you if you add more, the, the thing is that the how difficult it is to add one more. And also, you by adding more, you you are adding resistance to the path. More it's, heat. It's a, uh, yeah, it's something that we create more heat, and you have to get rid of that. So that's part of the design. Of the, of the. So it says what what determines the output 
voltage of the machine. That will be this. What, what determines this? As, as we said, it's determined by the, the speed and also how many turns you have and the strength of the magnet that you have. So all this will, will add voltage to the output. It says what is called the ampere, ampere turns and strength of the magnet. Uh, the strength of the magnet is the main flux, the magnetic flux, and also how many turns you have. The same principle applies for transformers. Yeah. Um, what type of output do you expect from this machine? Think, think about this. When the, it, it only creates a voltage when you see a, a fast fluctuation of the, of the flux okay so the fastest is when you when you are like here in this position when you pass it's going to be the faster and then when it's getting to this point the flux will be in that direction so the, the turn the, the wire will see no no fluctuation and then when you go the other way around you will, you will see the fluctuation in the other in the other sense so, okay so when you make a turn it will be like something high, and then a zero, and then something negative. It will go in the other in the other way. So it'll be alternating. It will be an alternating. This is also uh, a simplification. It will it will not be a sign. It's part of the design of the generator to distribute the, the different turns that you have to make it a sine wave. Otherwise, you have more like a, like a square. But if you have a square and then you put different different um, sizes of coils and, and how they, they, they are distributed around the, the shaft, you can add more and, and make it more and more similar to, to, to a sine wave, which is what you actually want, because uh, the sine wave is the perfect wave it has no extra harmonics that cause more heat and is not useful for power generation. So it's part of a really good design to have an output that is that is a sine wave. So it says, uh, since so the waveform peaks when the magnets are in line with the poles. Okay, so in this in, at this point will be the, the, the maximum that you have because it's the fastest fluctuation that you see. Um, and what determines the output frequency of the generator, as we said, every one of these, each one of these, is a, is a turn of the magnet, okay? So if you make it turn faster, then the frequency will be faster, and we can have 50 or 60 hertz or whatever other frequency, but these are the... the in Europe and the rest of the world and, and America and the rest of the other countries, <laughs> you have 50 or 60. It's just because they choose to. It could be any any other. Actually, I don't know why they choose. <laughs> uh, so it says the, the speed. And, and it says the number of poles, pole pairs, okay? Why is it so? You could have, you could have, one north here, and let's say instead of just a magnet, you could have like four four points, and you would have a, a, a north, a south, a north, a south. And when you make it turn in one spin, you will have double the double the frequency because it, 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 the coil what it saw was a north south north south. So that's why the, the speed of the prime mover and the number of the poles per. So what does it mean that, for example, now you have your generator spinning at 3600 uh, 3, RPM because it's a two poles. And here you have for, for 60 Hertz, uh, for 50 Hertz, you have 50 revolutions per second. That will be 3000 uh, 3, RPM. And for uh, 60 Hertz, what you have is 36 RPM. If you have double the number of poles, 
you shouldn't be spinning at this rate because that will create a, a different frequency. It will go to 120 instead of 60. So in those cases, the, the shaft is turned slower. And maybe you've seen uh, one machine that runs on 1800 RPM. Okay, so 1800 RPM is suitable and it's only only possible for four poles. So we have two poles. In this, in this, uh, yeah. mm -hmm. okay. so you have two poles. I don't know if you have any um, any motor, any synchronous motor in the. We used them. Uh -huh. And Same there were two poles. Yes. Because. Uh, they would also be uh, with the same relation. Okay, so one thing is, what happened? Let's say that you 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 don't have any load, any load connection. Okay, so you have the 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 voltage created here, and but there is no current because the loop is open. Okay, what happened if you connect the load? The this current. Uh, will flow will also create for for I mean within the, the, the interaction in, inside the shaft will create a magnetic flux because it's a current it's a current flowing on a on a on a turn so it will cre create a magnetic flux and that flux will oppose to the one that is created by the magnet so the problem there is that if you have an amount of flux, once you start using that, that voltage, you will have a reduced flux. And if you reduce the flux, the voltage will, will be reduced. You know, you understand that? So you would have to raise up your amperage. That, the the thing is that, that if you have a magnet... So you speed your magnet is what you're going to start. If you, if you make it turn faster... Right. It will increase the, the voltage, as we said, but you can't change this because the rule is that you have to maintain 60 hertz. Okay, so if you has to stay stable. The, the idea is that you, you keep the, the 60 hertz, so there is not a choice. It could be in an isolated system. You could go right. like uh, if you are feeding some lamp and you make it turn faster, right. you see it brighter or, or less brighter right. because you have the choice in that in that. Point because of the installation, but when you are connected to the grid, you have to maintain the frequency. So the frequency is not something that you could, in in in, in practice, use to control the the voltage. So, what other thing you could do? Remember, we have the the flux, the strength of, of the magnet. Right. right. So, can you can you increase the strength of the magnet? Make an electromagnet. That's the that's the next step. Because what happens when you connect the load, the voltage will collapse and it will not be useful anymore. Like I had, I had 120 volts and now I put a lamp and it went to 60. Okay, but, but choice. <laughs> Instead, if you put an electromagnet, so you replace the magnet, which is fixed in the, in the amount of flux that it can provide. You replace it by what we call uh, that will be the rotor and electromagnet, and it's fed from the outside. Okay, so let's say that you have a certain current flowing through the rotor to create to create a voltage in the output. When you connect something, it will collapse. But, but you say, okay, now I'm gonna I'm gonna increment this. So I will increment the flux, and I will increment in times the voltage output. Okay. Um, <clears throat> by doing that, adjusting the variable resistor, okay, you will vary the ma uh, magnetic flux density, thus <laughs> changing the output voltage. Okay, and that leads us to the to the basic AVR. <laughs> which is you have an operator watching the voltage. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, this has been automated for, for you guys. <laughs> you have an operator watching the, the voltage, and if it drops, he will manually increase the, 
the current applied to the rotors. That's what you have to do, and it's, it's the only thing that you can do in this installation. So uh, why why don't to put an electronic system to do that? That is called the static excitation system, okay? And it's static because what excites the rotor is a static part. It's not turning, it's uh, out of the generator actually. And you are just injecting current on the, these slip rings. This, these are where the brush are. So, so that's why we have the brush less. And I will show you what, what is that for. <coughs> And um, do you foresee any any issue that could be here? For example, why why would you like to get rid of these brushes? Is yeah, imagine you gotta change them? Yeah, yeah. A, lot, a lot of yeah, maintenance. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. slots between the, the rotor itself. You have mica, and then you have the copper. Mm -hmm. So you have to clean those out. So yeah. that's There's sparking. I mean, um, in a well designed rotor that's also part of the design you have you have the the rings um, it doesn't change from one one turn to the other because that will make a lot of sparks so it, it's like as it turns it will it will transfer to to the next um, you say the next pole no not the next pole but the next, next yeah I say polarity because it, it has to maintain that but you have a lot of current it's like could be in this generator around 900 volt, uh, 900 amps, or you didn't I mean, could be higher, but let's say. Uh, so it's a lot of current, and also a battery. Imagine a battery that can provide that, that amount of current. So it's, uh, it's something that is actually this one is not is not something practical. You you not implement it in place. It's just to give you an idea of what you need. What you need is to make current variated and make it flow through the through the rotor. Okay. I don't know if you if you want to take a break or something. Uh, see if we can go to then I will let me see. <clears throat> because after this we go to this point, okay?